Hello, everyone and fellow cleaning enthusiasts, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm Renee, and I clean, declutter, and organize my followers' homes for free. And today I'm going to spend all day in a laundry room and in a kitchen. These two spaces can really impact your daily routine when they're cluttered. Laundry rooms often can become a catch-all space, but today we're going to change that. So first up, we're going to sort through every item, and if it doesn't belong in the laundry room, it's time to find a new home or let it go. What just popped in my head was the song from Frozen. Let it go, let it go. Okay, I should stick to cleaning and decluttering and not sing. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the tape that's on the floor that's the transition door between the laundry room and the kitchen. And as always, I'll do before and after pictures after each section, and in the kitchen I'll do it after each cupboard. I tried soaking this tape in numerous chemicals and what finally worked was a product called Gooby Gone. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm not sure if it's sold elsewhere besides the United States. But I finally got all of this tape up and it was disgusting. And yes, I know I need to wear gloves. I just forgot again. Look at this before and after. With a little elbow grease and a lot of time in that straight razor, I was finally able to get the tape up. It's a totally different floor. As I finished up this floor, it was then time to move on to the laundry room. So this cabinet was next to the washer, and all the products that were on top were removed so I could clean it. So I started by removing all the items out of the cabinet. My goal was to get it emptied out so I could fix the shelves so they were the right height. This top shelf was missing a peg, so once I got it cleaned out, in my hardware bag I had spare pegs, so I got it out and I fixed it. When you're working with adjustable shelves, make sure your pegs are level across both sides. Once I got that done, I continued to remove the items off the other shelves. All of these towels on the bottom are for the dogs when they give them a bath. They're going to be moved over to the linen closet area of the laundry room. So here's the backstory. I'm on day two at this house. You can find day one here. This couple took a big step in buying her family home when they moved into another town. They were dealing with the loss of his mother and trying to get pregnant. There is more to this backstory later on. So what I'm doing now is putting like items with like items, light items on top, and heavier items on the bottom. I also take into account how tall the homeowner is or how short and how often they use the items so I know what shelf to put them on. So this cabinet is mainly just going to be cleaning and laundry supplies. Now onto the closet in the laundry room. The shelf on the right has been completely empty, and from decluttering the basement, wait till you see what goes on these shelves. All the towels that came out of the other cabinet are now going to go in this closet on the top shelf because they're used very infrequently. On the top shelf of this cabinet is going to be nothing but dog food, and the second shelf is going to be dog medication. They own two dogs, one's a golden retriever and one's a mixed breed. The third shelf is dog leashes, and I'm going to hang them up so they're easy to get when they want to walk the dogs. I got sidetracked with this door and it was time to clean it real quick. So all of the kitchen appliances that were in boxes in the basement are going to go on the right hand side in this laundry room closet so she can easily see all of her cooking appliances. And like the cabinet, I adjusted the shelves here as well. So now all of the dog items are easily accessible. One last thing to clean is the doggy door. Doggy doors are often overlooked when it's time to clean. Doggy doors can collect dirt, fur, and all sorts of outdoor elements. Just like people need a clean and organized space, your furry friends need one as well. You do want to make sure that you're using a pet-friendly cleaner. I'm using Simple Green, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Here are some amazing before and after pictures of this laundry room. And there you have it, a more organized and efficient laundry room that makes a chore a breeze. But I'm curious, what item in your laundry room can you not live without? Drop your answers in the comments below. I love hearing your tips and tricks, and who knows? Your suggestion might just be the life changer someone else needed. But now, on to the kitchen. First stop, the spice cabinet. And you guessed it, I'm going to remove all the items out of this cabinet. Once I have all the items removed, I'm going to check expiration dates or sell-by dates. And I know there's always lots of comments about this, and I go with what the homeowner wants me to do. Once I get everything removed, I wipe down all the shelving. As I'm getting ready to put the spices back into the cabinet, I'm checking with the homeowner on which spices they use most frequently and which ones they use less often. It's also easier when you're putting the spices away that the labels are facing you so you can read them easier. Here's your before. Wow, that looks so neat and pretty. Onto the cabinet to the right of the microwave. And this is the pill cabinet. And after I have everything removed, once again, I'm checking expiration dates or sell-by dates and going with what the homeowner prefers. A quick wipe down and then I'm ready to start organizing. So the container that I'm trying out in this cupboard is a soda can or pop can container for the refrigerator that I got at Dollar Tree. 
And the goal is to make it easier for the couple to pull down their medications instead of sorting through them one by one and trying to grab the medications all the way in the back of the cupboard. Here's your before video. And here's your after video. I have over-the-counter medication in one container and prescriptions in another. This cabinet is to the left of the spice cabinet. And yes, once again, I'm removing everything. And a quick wipe down on each shelf. The red containers you saw on the top shelf and on this shelf are completely full of needles. I did not realize they were full when I was taking them off the shelf. This coffee pod tree will go into another location. Also, all the vegetable oil and soy sauce will go on a lower shelf. Little did I know that I missed this bottle all the way in the back. I'm putting the sharp container back in the cupboard. She did not know how to dispose of them properly, so I took them to the local health department. But that was only after I organized the cabinet, and so I had to reorganize it after I was done. The medication I put up top, I found out later that that was supposed to be also disposed of properly, and I did that as well. This red mixer will go over into the baking section in another cabinet later on. The after section looks great except for the sharp containers. So like all the other cabinets, I'm removing all the items. This is going to be the canned food and baking cabinet. Of course, I don't know this until I get to the food pantry and see what's in there. I do a quick wipe down on each of the shelves. These shelves are tough to move, so they're going to stay in the same location that they currently are. Another question for you, when was the last time you did empty out your food pantry or your cupboards and wipe down the shelves? It is amazing how quickly the shelves can get dirty. So I'm going to leave that cabinet to the left empty as I dig into the food pantry. You guessed it, I'm going to remove all the items and wipe off the shelves. So I'm feeling a little short here. I had to stand on my tiptoes to wipe this down. I probably should have gotten a ladder. I'm also going to be checking all the expiration or sell bite dates on the food and go with what the homeowner wants. As I'm removing all the items from the shelving, I'm realizing that all these canned goods should not go on these shelves because they're not made for heavy items. Two shelves down and four more to go. As I'm taking everything out of the cabinet, I'm evaluating how I'm going to put it back in and in what categories. Your organizational system shouldn't just be about being pretty for a day, it should be about creating a system that lasts. Think zones, baking, breakfast, snacks, etc. And use baskets or bins for smaller items like packets and bars. And Lazy Susans are not just for spices, they make things a breeze to reach. I'll come back to that spot with a razor scraper and get it off. Labels are more than just cute, they're very functional. You can label shelves and bins and even bottom of jars. Trust me, it's a game changer. I don't know what spilled on this shelf, but it took some effort to get it clean. Which brings me to another point, and that's maintenance. The real magic happens in your daily decisions. A quick tidy up once a week can prevent this. And remember, it's okay to get a little messy sometimes. It's a pantry, not a museum exhibit. It's all about making it work for you. Back to the other cabinet and time to start organizing. The bottom shelf is going to be nothing but canned foods because they're heavier. The second shelf up is going to be the baking area, and this is where the mixer is going to go. On the second shelf that had the baking items, there was extra inventory of sugar and flour, so I put them up higher. And now going back to the pantry, on the top shelves go the lighter items. And I'm putting like items with like items. Those soda or pop containers are very handy to hold little items in. These shelves are not adjustable, so I have to work with them. Because the crackers didn't have a box, I'm putting them in a container so the crumbs don't fall out all over the shelves. Here's your before of the pantry. And here's your beautiful after.
This is the before video of the food cupboard, and here's the after. Now it's time to move on to the two junk drawers. I haven't come across a kitchen that doesn't have one. The homeowners were on the right track to sort things out with containers, but let's make it just a little bit better. Don't know how these drawers got stained, but they did not come clean. I picked up these trays at the dollar store. As I started putting things back, I was doing like items with like items. The back larger tray is just going to be for batteries. Did you know that batteries have an expiration date as well? Okay, so the first gray tray didn't work, and the other ones that she had in here worked perfectly. I forgot to take a before video of the junk drawer, but here's your after. The left drawer and the right drawer. Next stop, underneath the kitchen sink. As I'm pulling everything out, I'm realizing that there may have been a leak underneath the sink. The cabinet board is completely warped. Once I get everything cleaned up, my goal is to not put anything back there where it's soft and things might fall through. Anything that was not needed for the kitchen went into the laundry room cabinet. This kitchen sink has a soap dispenser. Did you know that you can unscrew it and refill your dispenser? Here's your before, and take a look at the water damage. And after. On to the next cabinet, which is to the left of the spice cabinet. I'm trying to get this pan holder out, and I have to disassemble it to get it out of the cupboard. These containers that are on the bottom will go into another cupboard. Once I get everything cleaned out, I move the shelves to fit the cups. Here's your before. And here's your after. All the coffee cups are on one shelf and fit nicely. So the next cabinet is underneath the food cabinet. And any food I find in here, I relocate in the food pantry or the food cupboard. Once again, I use the razor blade to get those tough crumbs and stains removed. This area is just gonna be used for kitchen appliances and gadgets and bowls. With this cabinet being so deep, it's tough to know what you have back there. So my goal was to make sure that everything was reachable and close up front and not to pack everything into the back. Look, vegetable oil. This will go in another location. A quick wipe down of all the food crumbs and get it nice and tidy. Here's your before, and here's your after. So much better. Now on to the Lazy Susan. Since the Keurig coffee maker is just on the countertop above it, this is gonna be where all the coffee supplies will be located. Something spilled here, I'm not sure what. I moved on to the top shelf while I let this soak with all-purpose cleaner. With a little bit of elbow grease and time, I got it all removed. And of course, I didn't take a before picture of this area either. So here's your after video. A nice little coffee station on the top shelf. Two more cabinets to go. This one is just above the microwave, which is above the stove. Do you remember that vegetable oil I found? It's going to go up here. The homeowner's preference was to have all the vegetable oil above the stove where they use it most frequently. So an update to the backstory. His granddad moved in due to health concerns and they welcomed a new little one into their family. All of the alcohol that was in here went in the cabinet above the refrigerator. The last cabinet was to the left of the microwave and this had bread and storage containers in it. And don't worry, I do wipe down the top of the refrigerator.
I did walk 12,837 steps, walk 5.91 miles, and burn off 468 calories. Here's your before. And here's your after video. I'm so glad I could help this family. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you at the next house.